And, of course, we're talking about the Israelite kings of the houses of Judah, you know, uh, Zerah and Pharez. Well, absolutely. We're yes. talking about the dispersion of Israel. Right. And right. Paul knew that the nations that he went to were all dispersed Israelites. Yes. And his letters right. prove it over again and again. Yes. So that the universalists who want to interpret this phrase, the way it has been translated, uh, and uh, you could say it like this, to bear my name before the nations, which, uh, which Gentiles they assume means not Israelites. Right. Yeah, okay. And kings, which is another separate group, whoever they might be, and the children of Israel, as if the first two were different from the, uh, from the latter. Right, but the, the grammatical construction is called a hendiatrisin. And it means one by means of three. It means that all three of these entities being mentioned are actually the same. The okay. nations and the kings of the sons of Israel is the literal reading. Yes. Okay, very good. Well, uh, let me finish with verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So, so uh, for the Paul bashers, these two verses, 15 and 16, are very uh, succinctly uh, declaring that Paul is a chosen vessel. Absolutely. The Paul bashers are doing us a great disservice. Yes. Because these verses not only do that, they prove that Christianity is for only right. the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right, because of the bad translation, the universalists have to chosen to universalize it, and the Paul bashers agree with them, not understanding the grammar here. Well, the Paul bashers, the Paul bashers' biggest mistake is simply taking for granted yeah. that the mainstream translators translated all this properly. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. absolutely. And they botched it at every turn. Yeah, they universalized it, they twisted it and perverted it at every turn, right. and, and this is one of the primary verses. Yes, yes, very good. So uh, let me just, uh, one more question before we close this evening. Uh, do you think that this, uh, this false translation or this mistranslation here is deliberate or are, are the King James, and it appears to me, this is the conclusion that I've come to for a lot of these really bad translations, is that these translations from the Greek in the New Testament, especially the writings of Paul, uh, it, it's, it sounds to me like these King James translators didn't know Greek that well. It, it seems to be on many occasions that they did not know Greek that well. Okay. And, okay. and that men before them made errors. Yeah. The biggest error, the biggest sin are the translators of, of recent times yes. who should know better, <laughs> who after 200 years... Yes. You, you know, the English, uh, uh, the English, the scholarship that the Englishman has brought us, has brought to the world, is simply amazing. Right. The work that they did in the Victorian age and, and the age of the empire, all right, the work that they did in archaeology and in language studies and... and I do the best that I can to follow that legacy. Right. And that is why I use all um, classical English in, in the sense of, you know, Victorian English references. Yes. That's why I use the Liddell and Scott lexicon. Right. I don't use any of the modern trash because a lot of that's watered down and politically corrected. Right. That's why I read the Loeb Library um, Greek classics because they were all translated in like the 1920s and 30s uh -huh. at, at the peak of of English scholarship, okay. most of them were translated by English scholars. Right, right. And so we can also detect in uh, the New Testament a lot of Catholic influence as well. Okay. Right, and, and in the 1600s, when the translators did translate, if, if indeed they, they knew any Greek, they, they had to know some, right? Right. They, 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 they had to universalize, they had to accept universalized interpretations. Yes. Because they did not, they knew they belonged in Christianity, but they did not know how. Right. They, didn't. they did not have the, the archaeology and, the, and the, the Greek scholarship and the scholarship in the classics yes. that, that later generations had. Yeah, they did not understand that they were Israelites, and the Jews were making the claim that they were Israel, and so that who are we? <laughs> right. It's probably just, what they were thinking. They just took for granted the Jewish definitions of a lot of terms, like right. Gentiles. Right, right. But Jerome, when he translated the Vulgate, you know, there are other words besides Gentilis that he could have used. Okay. But a Gentilis indicates somebody 
of the same race. Yes. Not necessarily of the same nation, but of the same race. Of the same race, exactly. And there are other words in Latin that denote people of other countries yes. that don't make that distinction. Okay. They don't yeah. have that connotation. Right. And the whole world has been fooled by the Jewish redefinition of the word Gentile to mean non-Jew. And it never did. And it never did. That's right. And, and Paul, you know, the commission here to Paul is to go and bring the name of Christ before both yes. the nations and kings of the sons of Israel. Uh-huh. Right. And Paul's epistles prove over and over again, and, and, and he does it to the Romans, and he does it to the Corinthians, that they are the dispersed children of Israel. Right. So and if Paul was going to pervert Christianity, we'd have an epistle of Paul to the Ethiopians, <laughs> an epistle of Paul to the Egyptians, the black an people. epistle of Paul to the... <laughs> To the Hutus and the Tutsis, right. we don't have that. There's no epistle the of Paul right. to the Arabs. There's right. no epistle of Paul to the Babylonians. Exactly. There's no epistle of Paul to the Edomites. Yeah, right. Paul right. could have very easily perverted Christianity. Right. And it, the it, Paul it, bashers are just idiots for not seeing that. And of course, in other books, uh, Paul definitely says that the Edomites are vessels fit for destruction. Of destruction, yeah. right. He does not include them among the Israelites. And he and, doesn't include any nation that's non-Israelite. Right. And Every he, one of those people Paul wrote an epistle to were dispersed Israelites. Right, right. And he excludes the uh, descendants of Ishmael, which is your today's Arabs, right? Absolutely. He, he excludes, he excludes those. them, explicitly yes. excludes them. Right. So, uh, so if you thoroughly understand the writings of Paul, and obviously this is one of the verses in verse 15 here, that can be universalized because of the way it's translated. And if okay. it's translated correctly, it's absolutely not universal. That's right. Yeah, very good. It's exclusive. Yes. Okay. That's why I wanted to discuss these last two verses in detail. Thank you, William Fink. We are making mincemeat of the universalist interpretation of the Holy Scriptures, especially the New Testament. I love this stuff. <laughs> All right. So thanks for joining me on this edition of Yahweh's Covenant People.